Welcome back to another episode of That's Business. Today's guest, Catherine McCord, this is her second time now on the podcast. So if you listen to the first episode, I joked about how Catherine quite literally slid in my DMs and wanted to be on the podcast. So we wanted to give you an update of how our first date and our relationship evolved over, what, two years? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We're just going to treat this like a date. It's fine. It kind of is. If you think about our relationship in a weird way, it is almost like that. There was the first meeting, like there were all the conversations leading up to the first in-person meeting. There was the big reveal at the in-person meeting, right? (laughs) Then there was the awkward follow-up or not so awkward follow-up. Like it actually kind of has been the same thing. You think it has, honestly. So we met in October of 23, finally in person. Um, Catherine invited me so graciously to this awesome summit that we'll get into and what she's got cooking right now. But kind of talking through different things. And I jumped on a plane and I said, screw it. I'm going to go fly to Dallas and uh, meet a stranger off the internet because not warned about that. I just want to point this out. Like if you're going to slide into someone's DMs, be good enough at it that they're willing to fly across the country to meet you. Honestly. And you were great at it. And it worked. (laughs) So I go to Dallas. Of course, it's a match made in heaven. We meet. It's great. It's even better in person. It was even better in person. With the follow-up and all, you have a lot of exciting things happening. So I, I want to talk about refresh the people that maybe didn't listen to the first episode. What do you do? Give us a little like synopsis of who you are, what you do, your specialty, and then we'll dive into what you're up to now. So I am a people operations and inclusion specialist, and I do consulting around those topics. And I go across the country and now even across the world speaking and teaching along those lines. I specialize in neurodiversity and disability. That's kind of my jam, but I work with all different types of inclusion. And I have historically really rocked out with talent acquisition. That's kind of that's kind of my other jam, like inclusion and then getting people hired, doing it creatively. That's kind of my jam. And I've also now gotten back into the event space. So I've been consulting and speaking and teaching, right? Like this whole time. And now I am getting back into the event space and I have two really cool events coming up this year and I can't wait. It's going to be an absolute blast. So before we dive into the events now, if someone maybe doesn't know what does neurodiversity look like and mean, right? And number two, why on disabilities or what does disability mean? Because We've talked a lot about. Right. Yeah, because seriously, like it's a term that we all use, right? But not everybody actually understands it. So that's a very fair question. So first of all, disability, there's three different types. There's medical disability, which is obviously where a doctor declares you medically disabled. Legal disability, which is based on the laws in your area, right? Mostly in the United States as governed by the American Disabilities Act and the associated uh, governing bodies. And then you have social disability and or societal disability. And that sucks. And honestly, that's kind of the bigger problem because societal disability has nothing to do with the individual themselves, but everything to do with the fact that society has not been built to be universal, to be accommodating. And so it's just and it's about biases and all that kind of stuff. So basically, societal is imposed on somebody. It's not actually about the actual human. So that's disability. Neurodiversity is a medically visible and or diagnosable difference in how a person processes information stimuli. So that's everything from autism, ADHD, and dyslexia over to like cerebral palsy and epilepsy, because both of those conditions actually change how you function at a neurological level, all the way over then to the mental health side, which is like bipolar, obsessive, compulsive disorder, anxiety, et cetera. So it's a broad scope and it ends up being about a third of the population you said you like, what does that look like? Meet Angela and I. Like that's <laughs> neurodiversity incarnate. And we're very different like in, in our neurodiversities. But man, man, is it flying. <laughs> well, and it's funny because hilarious enough, I didn't know I was neurodivergent. I mean, I always thought something was off. Not off, but different <laughs> because that's not the right word. Because in school, I mean, I am awful task taker, overthinker, but then 
you know, the professors that would say like, you wait till the last night to write your final paper, you're going to fail. And all we, I freaking four owed my master's degree in final thesis because it was all papers and I'm a great at writing, but. Oh yeah. And my mom always said, she's like, you're just a professional bullshitter is what it is. And now tagging that to this ADHD, what is it? I am a dual type with a little bit of anxiety and depression sprinkled in. So we got the trifecta Ooh, here. You just fun. It makes, I am so fun, right? It's so fun. It's so funny because one of my employees, Destiny, she cracks me up because if I'm with another neurodivergent friend, my friend Kristen has helped us with some work stuff and she's been incredible. And Destiny sits there like, what the fuck are you two talking about? <laughs> but we get it. Like, say yeah, y'all do. Know. Like, yeah. we get it. We understand. And, you know, it's like, hey, we're going on a trip na, 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 over here. And oh, yeah, I asked you about this an hour ago. Back to that subject. And she's like, deer in the headlights. Just like, I don't understand how you two think. So what is happening here? Yeah, that <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense. We're good storytellers. Exactly. Yeah, it, it is different. So I do not have ADHD. However, almost all of my good friends do. I just think there is one exception that is not ADHD. And that it is just like, you know, a really super close person to me. And so I think it's interesting how the different minds kind of complement each other, right? And kind of come together. So I have, just to disclose, I have on the medical side, I have a neurological disorder that causes TIAs, which are many strokes and seizures, and then also changes how my brain functions and puts things together. That's the one that kind of sucks, honestly. The others I actually enjoy for the most part. Um, so I have bipolar, which it sounds funny. People are like, you enjoy being bipolar? God, yes, it is awesome. I learned to manage the depression cycles. So they're not really so bad. My mania is super fun now that we've got that. It is. And control. Yeah, it's awesome. I have zero notes for that most of the time. Um, once we put the accommodations in place to make sure I wasn't overspending or anything. And then I have like the OCD is super helpful. Now it can be annoying. Too. Like I, I do have compulsive behaviors that if you are around me enough, you see it. It's it's a bit much, but overall, it's something that has benefited me in a lot of ways. So I'm I'm not mad about it. It just is what it is. So I have these other things going on. Oh, and then I have misophonia, which is where you certain sounds make you malfunction, which sucks for me. But it kind of cracks up some of the people I'm around because like there's certain sounds I'll just be like. Eh. And I'm just like twitching like a nervous lunatic because of the sound. One of them is kissing. Ooh. So if I'm watching a movie and people are kissing, I'm like, <laughs> like, I can't, I can't deal with it. Me doing it is fine. That's okay. I can't, no one else doing it is acceptable in my little brain. See, and I've been on this fun journey and maybe we need to figure this out because I feel like I also have it where my partner and I have left restaurants and we have left places because I said I can't do it. I can't do if someone's chewing too loud or if there's a scraping noise. Oh, that's misophonia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I had to learn. And, and even now to this day, being at certain types of restaurants, not, not like fancy restaurants, because they tend to do a lot to kind of take care of the sound issues. Yes. But like... Family style restaurants can be really challenging for me. I'll go, but it it can be really challenging. And now I use loop earbuds. That's a plug for them. There you go. Loop earbuds. Ooh. Because they say it and you can adjust so that you can still hear all the conversations, but it mutes the background noise. That's been a life like a lifesaver for me and a game changer. Yeah, it's bad. And not to call out my own father here, but I'm going to. He chews obnoxiously and I can't. I cannot. Like I have to have I have to have radio on, TV on, something. And then he's got severe ADHD. And I think he is a little autistic based on other people I know who are autistic. And I do think that. But well, yeah. He because this is different where my ADHD gets overwhelmed. I can listen to music when I work. And Allison, one of my other employees, she likes um, soundtrack music like Hans Zimmer or Zimmer. Oh, yeah. Loves. I can't listen to it. I have to have like my pop punk overplayed playlist that I know all the words. I can't listen to music I don't know because then I focus on it. Fair enough. Weird. But my father likes to have the TV on full blast, listen to music on full blast, and I have to physically walk out the room and just bury my or walk outside because I can't do it. And then he'll talk on the phone. I'm the same. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've had to talk to my husband. <laughs> I've had to talk to my husband about, I'm like, honey, 
<laughs> you cannot have more than one sound going at the same time because he'll be he'll be watching TV and then have his his phone off. Yeah. And so all these videos are I'm like, no, no, uh, uh-uh, no, one sound. You get one sound. That's it. Yeah. I fake your sound. That's what you get, buddy. And so he wears earbuds so that he can listen to his his videos and all that. And I don't have to deal with it because I can't. I can't. Mm-mm, no <laughs> malfunction. And it's funny because with the combination of OCD and misophonia, I often get mistaken as having autism, which I'm not offended by that. That's fine. It's actually my favorite neurodiversity, but I'm definitely not because I'm missing the very key markers, which brings me into, that's why I always tell people to get formally diagnosed. It's not about labels or medications or any of that. I mean, if you want to be medicated or you need to be, God bless, you do whatever you need to do. But it's more about understanding yourself and making sure that you have the correct information. So also don't just go to some random person to get diagnosed. Go to somebody who actually specializes in it. Yes. And understands and isn't going to treat it like it's the end of the world. Uh, Because it's not. It's really not. But just have somebody that's going to explain it to you, walk through it, and will help you get the correct diagnosis. I totally agree. Yeah, it was a fun journey because I didn't get diagnosed with ADHD or anything until two years ago. And it's actually all online, which is awesome. But they like hold your hand and they're like, okay, well, before we just give you medication and all, like, let's talk through it. And it was like therapy sessions. I was like, wow, this is like, you're not, you're not shaming me. This is really cool. But, and that's how it should be. Yes. And it's been great. And it's, it's, I am on medication for it, but my doctor, she's like, don't take it every day. You know, right. you need it to work. You need it to function fine. But I don't want you getting addicted to this. And then we just keep upping you and upping you and giving you our drugs. Good for your doctor. I wish more doctors took that attitude. I really do. It's so upsetting that they don't. Oh, so on that note, so this is kind of interesting. And I feel like this needs to be discussed more. So I hit early menopause because my uterus was terrible and had to be taken out. And I'm still angry, by the way, that they wouldn't let me feed it to a shark. I just want to throw that out there. Like, that's all I wanted was for my vengeance and just to see that happen. I had a friend that had a boat. We had a shark tracking app. We had the whole thing. They wouldn't let me have it back to to do that. So rude. Just wanted to throw out that I'm still angry about that. But um, so I was thrown into early menopause and I I have not uh, ever medicated. Oh, I would. How old was I? I actually, I was 37, 38 when I actually started, probably 38 when I really started into menopause, which is young. Very. And I started changing. All, all the neurodiversity stuff started changing. My hormones started changing. And the way that my depressive cycles work changed, the way that my manic cycles worked changed. But it was different. So I've been managing this for years with this one way of knowing how I reacted to things. And then it was like, oh, this is fun. Let's just do a whole new thing now and completely throw you for a loop. Good luck, madam. You know, it, it, it's so, we just went on this whole new adventure. And so for the first time, I had to temporarily have medication for my really bad manic cycles. I didn't have to take it every day I was manic, but I had to just on certain days take it because it really, it got out of control for a little bit. And and so we had to, and now I'm back to managing it. I figured out, again, the triggers and all this kind of stuff. It got everything lined back up, but it was a whole new process. And I feel like people don't talk about that, that pregnancy does that to you. Um, if you're menstruating versus if you're not, that makes a difference in your body chemicals, therefore medical conditions and neurodiversities. Then you have menopause uh, or men's change of life. I just want to say this too. Men go through menopause. Like they do. It's not called that. And we need to like, you know, but we need to start talking about the fact that men go through it too. We, we call it this like midlife crisis thing, but it's flipping menopause. Their bodies are changing. Their hormones are changing. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's just one has been treated as a funny ha ha and one has been treated as an ooh yucky. Oh, it's like this has been happened before. What? This has never happened to women before. What? <laughs> But yeah, so I just feel like we need to talk about that too, that it changes stuff for you. And I think there's a lot of women in the workplace that are like, what's happening? Like, why can I suddenly not stay on top of shit? Why am I suddenly not remembering things? Why am I suddenly confused by things that used to never flip and confuse me? And that's what it is. And you just have to learn to eat a little bit differently, how to sleep a little bit differently, 
these kinds of things for the new way that your body is. Can't keep going with the same patterns. You got to change them up. And it really does make a difference. And then you can be kind of back to your old self a little bit more. You're never going to be 100% the way you were in your 20s or anything, but it can be a lot healthier and a lot better. Well, and there's just so much that does happen. I mean, whether it's, hey, throw a pandemic in there. I mean, you're just for fun, your environment, your things that happen to you. And I, I mean, it's been a fun journey. And I shared this with you that understanding nutrition more and how things affect Mm -hmm. every all of it and how it affects your hormones. I'm like, oh, I wish I would have been taught this. This would have been like cool, you know, not just learning it now. That needs to be part of education. Can we just throw that out there? That needs to be part of like baseline education is this is how nutrition affects you and this type of thing. And I think this is a thing that every doctor needs to be talking to their patients about. It's not just you know, eat vegetables and all that. But what specifically do you with your particular body chemistry? My doctor did all these labs on me and then showed me, okay, this is where this is. This is where this is. So this is how you need to be eating to take care of yourself best. And I'm like, yes, thank you. (laughs) That's so helpful. And, And so we do that periodically just to see if there's any adjustments that we need to make. But I'm with you like that. It's so different. And I think too, and another thing for work, like why are we not talking about how foods affect us at work? They do. Yep. They totally affect us at work. What you listen to, everything, everything that you input into your body, whether it's sound or feeling or whatever, all smell, all of that affects how your neuroprocesses work and how your body functions. Right. And I think it's people always laugh at me. They're like, what do you mean you can you're drinking coffee past 3 p.m. I'm like, you don't understand. It levels me out. Like it doesn't like Mm -hmm. I don't get jitters. It's I'm from down to level now. That's the difference. Or sour candy is one of mine. Like love. It's not like a candy issue. Like I'm not a sweet person. I could give up sweets for the rest of my life and not feel bad about it. But salt, on the other hand, absolutely not. But sour candy. Then I always wondered why that was a thing. But sour candy. It's one of those things for ADHD people that helps as well. So isn't that funny? Yeah. And people just don't know that. Yeah. It's like, it's like this is unsung like helper that you can give yourself. And it's not a one size fits all. I mean, I, I've had friends that are like, I can't do candy. Like it takes me, I can't, I can't do it. But yeah, anyway, so we, we've gotten off on, on about, but it's so, diet, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so but people don't know. They don't know. They don't. I can know. I've been on this. I just told my friend yesterday, we got dinner and she's due actually day before my birthday. She's due April 25th. And I'm like, I feel like I am 22 again, out of college, starting my first big girl job when it comes to understanding pregnancy, what your body goes through, menopause and all. And I always feel so stupid. And I ask questions and now that my friends are having kids, second kids, whatever. And I'm just like, I'm sorry if these are dumb questions. They're like, I didn't know any of it. So yeah, we don't. We don't talk about it. We don't talk about any of this stuff. Like the, I, I try to tell my sister everything that happens to my body so that she will be mentally prepared. Like one of the things that, she, that I talk to her about. You're going to scar her. I am. Because she's like, what? I don't, what? I'm like, yeah, this happens to everybody, baby. And she's like, no, I don't want to. Like the weird hair phenomenon like I don't know if you're old enough to have had you probably not to have had this yet so what happens is at a certain point mid to late 30s you start to get random giant hairs that show up seemingly overnight in inappropriate places like it'll just come out of like the front of your neck and all of a sudden you've got a three inch hair out of the front of your neck or like you just have like like a guy who's never had that happens to men too has never had back hair in his life, suddenly has like a poof of back hair on a, like a random shoulder blade. Like, what is that? And then the other thing that all women experience is like, you know, you get to like mid thirties and all of a sudden, all of your body fat for some completely unknown reason goes straight to your underarm. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. And then it just starts jiggling and you're like, I work out and stuff. So, like, what is happening? Why? Why? Why is this here? What? I don't need a wing. I'm not trying to fly somewhere. <laughs> What's happening? Why is that where it went? <laughs> I, it's weird. All of your fat goes to weird places. Like I legit kept getting weighed at the doctor and I was like, there's no way that's my weight. I'm looking at myself in the mirror. I'm like, my body curves in, my waist curves in, my tummy's relatively flat, not 
super flat, but flattish, you know? And all of a sudden, one day, we have this full body mirror in our, uh, as you go from our bathroom to our closet. I just happened to catch a glimpse of myself. Girl, all my fat went to my back. All of it. It just all of it just, <laughs> just migrated. It migrated. It migrated from the front around to the back. And I was <laughs> like, what happened? So completely new workouts are needed to keep fat in check. It's a true thing. I wasn't prepared in the early 20s when you just like have hips one day. So I've always been curvy gal, but I was like, oh, this is fun. Like I've been gained weight, but that's cool. So yeah, yeah, so much this fun. Is fun. How I look completely different. Now pan so weird. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. Yep. Love that. So with all these wonderful health issues and all these <laughs> neurodiversities, you have two huge events coming up and I want you to tell me the thought behind them, why these are important to you and walk us through both of them. Yeah. So we'll start with the first one that's coming up, which will be in August, which we're going to do the first ever in-person mega neurodiversity wonder world slash summit uh, called Neuroverse Lives at Grand Central Station in New York. Yeah. Because if you're going to go big, go big, right? Like none of Go this, big or go home. Yeah. None of this small shit. So it's it's fantastic. Basically, we're going to have everything from what is neurodiversity, you know, education booths and fun stuff to like science and art showcase. Like here's the contribution of neurodiversity. We're going to have some cool authors and vendors. We're going to have some great accommodations there for people to be able to get free. You know, like, hey, yes, this is a thing. You need to be able to take care of yourself. Here you go. Here's this thing that can take care of you. And so we're going to have a lot of resources, a lot of education. Every single booth is required to have some kind of education about neurodiversity. Uh, there's going to be 30 plus booths, so that should get interesting. Um, you're going to be there. I will. Uh, helping to provide <laughs> resume assistance, job search assistance. Uh, we're going to have some other booths there. They're going to be hiring, uh, that type of thing. A cool new uh, job board that's designed by the neurodiverse. So it's going to be super uh, neuro-friendly. So we're very excited. So it's going to be everything from jobs to history and art and all this kind of stuff right in the middle of Grand Central Station across from their winery. So I thought I, it was important to mention that it's across from the winery cool. too. Yeah. Very important. So uh, so that was coming up August 24th. Cannot freaking wait. It's free to the public, by the way. 100%. Everybody is welcome. How cool. Yes. Because we want to show the awesomeness of neurodiversity. It's not about making money. It's about we're so awesome. Y'all should know about us and how cool we are. So uh, <laughs> it's a chance for us to showcase ourselves um, and also support our community. And one thing too that I learned, um, this is kind of a big piece of this too, but we're not making it formal because I feel like that puts too much pressure. But a big piece of this is a lot of the people in the community feel alone. Yes. And they feel isolated. And so bringing a bunch of us little human octopuses together in one space gives a great opportunity to meet and greet and get to know one another. And there's going to be a virtual platform where they can, you know, connect if they want to. But it's just, it's a great chance to get to talk to other people in your community and realize that you're not alone, even if it's just the people at the booth, just to have that. So that's a big element of it too. So that's the Neuroverse Live. Cannot wait. August 24th. It's going to be super exciting. And we are still looking for sponsorship, by the way. Just going to throw that out there. Although we, we do have some great leads on that. But then the other events, which you're also participating in. Because you're obsessed with me. Our date went so well. I you am. just can't I, stay away. I can't get enough. I can't. I need you in my <laughs> life. All the days of my life. So <laughs> the other one is also a spawn from the same charity. And it's semi-based on an event that I was helping with for the last couple of years that's run by a friend of mine who, with her blessing, I have split off and kind of done, because she's kind of going a different direction with hers. I'm kind of taking this piece on over here. Um, and it's called Peopleverse, because we're just going to stick to the universe theme, I've decided. The verses, the verses. Good branding. <laughs> so it's called Peopleverse. And it's going to be flipping awesome, because it's not... A like, let's go sit here and get yacked at kind of summit. You know, you're all just sitting there bored with your coffee, doodling, texting, whatever. Oh, no, we are going to be engaged, actively creating solutions together 
It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be really cool. And I have amazing humans coming in to facilitate each session, everything from HR tech geniuses over to recruiters, all the way over to entrepreneurs. It's, it's a very diverse background. I'm super, super excited about it. That one is going to be about getting hands on and yes, learning, but also creating the future of work and actually implementing changes that people can then take back and actually use at their workplace. So we're going to have collaborations, white papers, research, education and collaboration sessions. Oh, the, the dinner the night before is at the planetarium. So excited. Our meet and greet is at the planetarium and they're going to give us our little private showing. It's going to be so cool. And food is included. I'm a Texas girl. So of course, barbecue is one of yes. the menu <laughs> items. But it's going to have breakfast and lunch both days. It's going to be super fun. It's not expensive to attend. Highly recommend. Oh, it's a a limited inclusion. So we're only having a total, including the facilitators, of 50 people. So that means that there's only 40 slots. So come join us. It'll be super fun. So exciting. Now, getting back into doing events, like what was your calling to do these? And hello, plan a massive event at Grand Central Station in August and then turn around like, we're going to do another one in Dallas and, uh, you know, two months later. Because why not? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Part of that's mania. Uh, <laughs> I'm here for it. I'm like, I want to be you when I grow up and have the energy to do all Aww, that. Thank you. Yeah, but seriously, no, it's, it really is. So I used to do events for the travel partner to the Dallas Cowboys. I used to oh. help. I didn't know that. Yeah, I did. And it was super fun. And I was really good at it. I, I took to it, the lady that ran it, I just took to it lightning fast of running events. So before my first season with her, I was already running my own little events under her umbrella. So I just took to it. And so now, like, fast forward, I'm like, you know what, let's, and I've done some other events along the way, like fundraisers and stuff like that for different charities. And so I was like, I want to get back into this. I miss it. It was fun. So I just decided, like, let's just do it. And it it has to be something I care about, right? Like, I love sports, you know? And so it has to be something I care about. And I care about neurodiversity and love it. And so I just, I made some amazing connections. And I was like, this is the time. Let's just freaking rock and roll it. Let's do it. It's a big, scary goal. Trust me, there are plenty of times I'm like, oh, no, what am I doing? I'm going to mess this up. It's going to happen. Uh, but it's already is coming together. It's going to be great. And then Peopleverse kind of fell into my lap because I was doing the work to help my friend. And then, like I said, she changed her mind and went in a new direction. And I was like, screw it. I already did the work. You I did. think I could do this. Let's just roll with it. <laughs> just It just kept on marching and just changed directions. And that's kind of the blessing of neurodiversity is we can, not all of us, it, it depends on your neurodiversity, but you know, we all have our, our little kind of superpowers, so to speak. And a lot of us can pivot easier than other people. Now, it's kind of one or the other, right? They're either petrified of pivoting, right? Or it's like our superpower and it's like, eh, no big deal, you know, whatever. But but for me, yeah. (laughs) But for me, I'm like, oh, that didn't work out. No big deal. We'll just do this thing over here. Mm -hmm. I just, my husband's even commented. He's like, you are just not afraid. There was a time in our relationship when we both uh, lost our jobs to layoffs. At the same time? Damn. Within a few days of each other. Ooh. It was awful. Yeah. And I just went, okay. Like, it'll be okay. I was not stressed. I was, not, I was just like, well, all right. Like, this this sucks. It's not the best thing, but okay, no big deal. We'll just pivot. We'll do this and this. And we just made it work. You know, my little brain just went into, okay, we're just going to problem solve this thing and it will be okay because we have these skills and it will work. Neurodiversity. It's so interesting. It's so interesting. It's so interesting. I'm going to say that over and over again, but... I actually just finished a book called The E-Myth Revisited. So it's this book came out in the 80s, like it is old school sometimes, but it, he redid it in early 2000s. I think he re-released it. And it's like this whole thing on who, like your mindset around who's the entrepreneur. There's an entrepreneur, a manager, and a technician. So the entrepreneur is thinking 10 steps ahead. They're thinking of ideas. They're thinking like, what's next? What's next? What's next? Manager kind of manages everything and go with the flow, almost like a project manager there. Right. The technician is work fulfillment. 
And you have to have all three. Yes. You have but to. But the book is about why most small businesses fail. So friend recommended it to me. It's a small business owner and we think the same way. And what a technician does is it's just fulfillment. Like, oh, okay, I broke off from corporate because I'm sick of filling someone else's pockets. I'm going to fill my own. But the technician is also someone that is more focused on, is too scared to like think big picture and think big things. But I thought about it and I have to do more research. I literally just finished it last night of, I feel like people, and I'm like, oh, this makes sense because I scare the shit out of a lot of my entrepreneur friends. They're like, yeah, I'm like, and I'm more, fuck it, we'll figure it out. This podcast was my good friend, Nick. And funny enough, he's dyslexic and he has his own neurodiversities. And my other friend, Mario, both have been on the podcast too, are my two friends that are like, fuck it, we'll figure it out. People will have multiple neurodiversities there. So (laughs) I'm like, we got a little something going on here. But other friends, I freak the fuck out. And they're like, I don't know how you do this. I'm like, yeah, whatever. There's credit cards for a reason. Like, I'll pay them off eventually. <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. It'll be <laughs> See, you think how I do. I'm like, eh, it's fine. And it's funny. So my husband has completely different characters. Mm-hmm. And he's on the spectrum. And he is, he is that manager that can make everything run when it seems impossible. Ooh. And that like when I have this big, ridiculous idea is like, okay, special pants. Like, but this is how we can actually special like, pants. run. I like that. He has a special pants. Um, I don't know. I just came up with that. I don't know why that was what came out of my mouth. Here for it. But, and, and I'm very good at running things also, which gives me kind of a unique, like you are, which gives me a kind of a unique skill set because a lot of the dreamers can't do the other part of it. But I can't. My, my brain works for both. But his strength is that let's make the this, this stuff work, right? So when things are really busted he's the person that you want to come in it doesn't matter if he's ever done it before by the way that's completely irrelevant wow he will come in and make it work i've seen him do it in multiple industries where he just comes in and is like oh no this isn't how you do this it's all of these things and then completely changes how something is done and it's then amazing and he went into two <clears throat> different companies and one of them more than doubled their income, like the whole company. This was a big company. Wow. More than doubled their income because of how he changed their business. And then the other one, it was like triple. Dang. The, yeah, it was crazy. That's just how he he functions. So, But he can't do what I can do and do the, ah, fuck it, let's just do this and run with it, right? That's the part, like his brain is like, ah, eh, no, can't do it. But <laughs> so that's why I tell people, you... You have these different strengths and it doesn't make one better than the other. It doesn't make one, you know, like I'm the better executive just because of my skill set. And by the way, executive does not mean that you're more skilled. That's a misnomer. That's just a particular skill set. I am a fantastic executive. I'm a decent ground manager. (laughs) Like Decent. He is spectacular at ground management or the technician like so he could be that project manager or the technician either one and thrive like a mofo i'm over here as the entrepreneur slash executive and that's that's where i live the rest of it makes me nuts i can do the project management but it it makes me a little bit bonkers to be limited like that yes and to be kind of smushed out yeah i can't do it no so like the policies and procedures and oh we went through this like two years ago and shout out again to nick that was great to help with it but i wanted to throw my head through the wall and i'm like i hate doing this like i was like throwing tantrums i was like this is stupid i love policies and procedures but i have to be allowed to just create them and then send them out for approval and then that's it like i can't do the let's sit down and have like 50 meetings about that no no just let me do it leave me alone and then you can just look at it afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I'm more yeah. of like, I have my idea. Okay, you execute it or I help execute, yeah. but <laughs> this is what I am envisioning. I'll get the people like you build the ship. I'll get the people and then they'll tell them. So, yeah, I think it's the OCD in me that kicks in that allows me to do stuff like that. For sure. Right. That's what it is. Because if I only had the mania, that would stuff would never happen. It would never happen. Or if I only had you know, whatever cycle I'd been for the bipolar, um, it would that would never happen. It's the OCD that kicks in. That's like we must complete this. We started it. We must complete it. Oh my god, it's not done. We have to keep going. Oh my god, now there's this. Now there's this detail. Now we have to talk to this vendor. Now we have to do this. And it's just, but the OCD. But it has to be done meticulously. It has to be done correctly. 
I also work so fast that I that's actually something I have to warn people about. You do. That are going to work with me. It sounds like a brag. And in a way it is. But yeah, you've seen it. Like you've actually gotten to see it. And I'm like, no, 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 no. When I say I work fast, you have one thing in your mind. Let me explain to you what this is actually going to look like. No. <laughs> like I will get on your nerves because I'm going to be way over here and you're going to be way back here. But I appreciate it because it's, I feel like you've thought it out already. I'm trying to explain it because I, I've seen it in action multiple times, but where I feel like when I have a vision or I'm like, I know it'll work, I can see it. And you're like, okay, here's the <laughs> steps to get there. And I already figured it out. And it's like, okay, yeah, take whatever you need. I'm there. Yeah, I'm already there. So you just, you you figure your stuff out. I'm good. Yeah, yeah I know what you mean. Yeah. And I have 3D model thinking. That's one of my neurodiverse superpowers. I didn't know that was a neurodiverse superpower until I started like really learning all of that stuff. But I do. I have 3D model thinking. It's like my events and stuff. Like I picture, I can see them in my head. And that's why they end up looking really good. Or I can I can see how a certain project needs to look or a technology that I've designed. Because I've also helped design a couple of technologies. Casual. Um, I can see what it needs to look like in my brain. And so then it's just making it come to life. You know, like I tell people, like, I can't code for crap, but I can design a technology because I know what the UI UX needs to be and I know what it needs to do. And then I just tell them that and then they do all the behind the scenes. Really cool, amazing stuff. That's awesome. You're just one of the most fascinating people ever. I think I'm just weird. You're not weird. <laughs> Who's normal? Who's normal that you know? I know. I hate this whole concept of like normalcy. I'm like, who the fuck is normal? Like, what's normal? <laughs> You know what I you know what I equate normalcy with is boring. Yeah. If I call somebody normal, they're boring and uninteresting or they're average. Like, okay, everything about you is like blended into everything else. I have no interest in this. Goodbye. And I am that person, by the way. And so like <laughs> I get I get teased because I'm the person that will like say a baby is ugly. Like that's not a cute baby. And I'm I'm the same <laughs> I'm the same way with people. I'm like, no, they're a potato. I don't like them. This is not an interesting <laughs> So if you've ever been called a potato or bland or uh, average, just know what Catherine means here. So, <laughs> yeah. or if like if I meet your baby and I immediately compliment their shoes, understand what I'm really saying is that is not that kid is not cute. You got yourself an ugly baby. <laughs> Damn, that's an ugly baby. <laughs> Sorry, that's a song. That's an yeah. actual song. <laughs> Note on that. I mean, I feel like the beauty of being neurodivergent right. is you say what other people are thinking. Yeah. Less filter. Less filter. And it's not in a rude way or to say like, screw you type way, but no. I think, and I've been told this by multiple friends and I don't want to seem like I'm bragging, but they're like, I just never could do what you do. Or you flew to Dallas to meet someone you met on LinkedIn. I was like, yeah, well, my roommate from college lives down there. So like if I needed an oh, SOI, nice. she had my location, you know, <laughs> it's fine. But so in case I turned out to be a serial killer, it was fine. It would have been OK anyway. <laughs> but I met, I mean, I would say a good quarter of the people on this that have been on this podcast I've met off LinkedIn or online that I've ended up meeting in person. And I think it's the instead of saying like, oh, I wish or I wish I wish and that's why my partner and I compliment each other very well is it's like, hey, want to go do this today? Or, hey, want to go do that? Or, hey, I was thinking we should go here. We should go there. And it's like, OK, let's do it. And yeah, I think it's spontaneity. Yes. And it's not the like we have we have so much money and we can just do what we want. It's like, no, we plan and we just make it happen. And I'm like, why, why can't I do it? I could die tomorrow. Let's do it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Just live in the life. And I think, too, another thing that I've noticed you're very good at and that I teach quite a bit, and you've heard me teach about this, is the importance of responding and curiosity, Yes, not ego. So, and that's such an important part. So for instance, and this is a very funny example, a friend of mine, and I think you've actually heard this story before, but your listeners have not, so I'm gonna grace them with, with this little gem. Please do. So I had this glorious experience of getting to meet a human who is 3D printing human tissue, which they are then going to grow into organs, which can then be transplanted into human beings so that you don't, you know, there's no longer a need for a donor list, right? It's amazing. It's extraordinary. So I communicate. So they're 3D printing human tissue. I get back from the summit. I'm so excited. And I'm telling one of my best friends this story. And I conclude the explanation of what he's 
this other person is doing. And I'm so excited telling her about, you know, how now there's no longer going to be a, a need for it. Oh, good organ donor list. This is so amazing. The first thing within a split second of me being done with my explanation is that she said, I wonder if you ate it, if it makes you a cannibal. And I said, what? And she goes, I wonder if you ate one of the 3D printed organs, if that makes you a cannibal. <laughs> That's what you got what out of that story. Interesting response. I don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> that was an interesting response. So I said, okay, can you explain that thought process to me? And she goes, yes. She goes, I was just reading this whole article about, you know, because they're 3D printing food yes. now and how people who are vegetarian and vegan were saying that's still not that like some of them were saying it was cruelty free. Some were saying it was not. And there was like this whole debate around was 3D printed food, vegan and vegetarian or not. So in her mind, the, the last thing that she read about 3D printing anything was about food. Fair. And so she <laughs> there and then it just led to cannibalism. So <laughs> good old cannibalism. <laughs> I was like, I was like, but what a fascinating train of thought. And had I not had this other piece of information... It made it way weirder before I knew that. <laughs> and instead of responding like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You responded in, how did we get there? Please tell me. Yeah, so tell me about how we got there. And when you do that at work or when you do that in your relationships, it makes such a difference. My relationship with my partner grew exponentially when I learned to do that and to stop assuming that what he heard was what I intended and to stop assuming that what I received is what he intended and to start responding in curiosity and the same thing at work. Like, okay, so how I said this to you and this was my instruction. How did we get over here? You know, tell me about this. And so what I kind of use at work because you don't necessarily want to word it that way because that can make people feel defensive. So I kind of, <laughs> I kind of do. So I was a bad artist as a kid. I still am terrible. My pictures made no sense. And so my mother didn't want to make me feel bad about it. So she would say, tell me about this. Instead of trying to guess what it was and guessing wrong or something, that, she would say, tell me about this. And then she could comment on it according to whatever I had come up with in my head. And I kind of do the same thing when I'm asking for, you know, when I'm responding in curiosity, okay, can you tell me a little bit more about that? And it doesn't put people on the defensive. It's not, you're wrong. This is weird whatever, you know, so I just tell me more about that. It, or, you know, like you said, tell me how we got here. Tell, I'd, I'd love to learn more about your process is a great way to say that. I'd love to learn more about your process and figure it out because sometimes there's just been a communication error, but a lot of people get so frustrated. So but like, don't just communicate. None of us have the same experiences. None of us have the same data input. So we have to learn to meet each other. Yes. It's not that hard, but no, it, it is. And I've I talked about this when we initially talked about or the first conversation we had about it is like I go to defensive sometimes and I'm guilty of that. But it's understanding that not everyone's <laughs> out to get you. Some people are, but it's just an understanding. And even I think that makes me a good salesperson of work with client. And I hate things salesperson, but it is what you do as a business owner <laughs> to just Right. To understand like, OK, well, why do you need help? What can I do for you? Like, why do you feel this way? Right. What compelled you to reach out? What's your situation? And it helps you kind of connect the dots and figure out what they need in any capacity. Understand the other humans. Understand the other humans. That's the thing. Curiosity. Yes. So as we wrap this up, because, of course, we could continue on forever. Um, what advice do you have for listeners? Number one, respond in curiosity. Learn to recognize your own ego mechanism, which is that little thing that it happens to all of us, by the way, like no shame, no blame on this, where your body is trying to defend itself. Your mind is trying to defend itself against what it perceives as an attack, which is somebody disagreeing with you or you know information that's contrary to what you believe. Recognize that ego mechanism and say, wait, no, thank you. And then start exploring. Because when you do that, your mind expands exponentially. Your brain becomes more capable of understanding more and has more information with which to make better decisions. And you start to grow and you start to evolve. And then your business starts to grow and evolve and the people around you start to grow and evolve. And you, your life just gets exponentially better. So that is my key advice is learn to identify your ego mechanism. Learn to shut that 
mess off because we no longer need it and learn to get curious and to research and to expand your mind. It's amazing. I'm so happy you slid in my DMs. Thank you so much for doing that. You're so welcome. <laughs> so for those of you listening, if you want to attend the Peopleverse or Neuroverse had, or just hang out with Catherine, all her links are in the show notes and tune in again next week for another episode of That's Business. If you're looking for a career change and you're not sure where to start, the Resume Rescue can help. Sure, there's no such thing as the perfect fit for everyone, but here at the Resume Rescue, we're on a mission to find the perfect solution for you. Whether it's changing careers, updating a resume, learning LinkedIn, or practicing interviewing, we have you covered. Find us online at theresumerescue.com and find all of our contact info in our show notes.